Good evening from London. South Africa is set to briefly overtake Nigeria and Egypt as the continent's largest economy next year. This is according to forecasts from the International Monetary Fund. The IMF's World Economic Outlook envisions South Africa's GDP to reach 401 billion US dollars next year, ahead of Nigeria's 395 billion. Nigeria's economy had previously eclipsed all others in the region, but fortunes have been dimmed as the new administration grapple with runaway inflation and a deep plunge in the value of the Naira. Rolls-Royce Holdings has announced plans to eliminate as many as 2,500 positions worldwide, which is the equivalent to about 6% of its global staff. The aero engine maker struggled during the COVID pandemic and was forced to raise billions of pounds to support the business. About half of the firm's employees are based in the UK, with 11,000 staff in Germany and a further 5,500 in America. America and Israel have agreed to come up with a plan to get badly needed humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip without it falling into the hands of Hamas. The U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, said President Joe Biden would discuss the idea when he arrives in Israel on Wednesday. Gaza's 2.3 million residents have been left without power, pushing health and water services to the brink of collapse. Earlier, I called up with activist Sharifa Energy for her assessment on the developing humanitarian story. In, in regards to the aid um, at the Rafah border, it's disgusting because people can't, like, they can't get any aid or support in. Um, there's trucks waiting, you know, they're being threatened that they'll be bombed um, as well. So, you know, we can clearly see that the Palestinians in Gaza are being left to die. Um, they're being left to be murdered, left to be massacred. You know, hospitals were bombed. You're looking at, you know, babies in incubators. You're looking at pe people that are diabetic, depending on insulin and all the rest of it, it it's, it's, it's just wild, I, I, you know, it's, it's horrible to see. You know, we, I, I was a witness to the Grandpa fire. Every time I saw a block uh, and, and I saw lights on, I kept seeing fire everywhere. I can't even imagine what these people are going through, you know. But the British government are allies of the Israeli occupation. They are supporting apartheid, and that's the question. So any conversations around aid, they're not really going to, they're not, the Palestinian people are not their priority, you know. Even in this country, you can you can look at how Ukrainian refugees were treated as European refugees. Then look at how Syrian refugees are treated. Look at how Sudanese refugees are treated. There's a clear disparity and inhumanity, and um, that is the reality of the British state. Those are your main stories from London at Close of Business.